Warning, it's time for Radio Free Filler Episode 13. Since this is the final show of this tour, we thought we'd go to someplace special. Someplace really special. A place that most people thought only existed in fiction. Well, as it turns out, it's real and we're here. So right now, it's time to kick off the show direct from Shangri-La. Isn't that nice? Isn't that sweet? Isn't that soothing? Isn't that enough? Say, boss. What did you say? Uh, say, boss. Yes, what is it? It turns out there's been a mistake. What kind of mistake? A uh, mistake with the booking. This isn't really Shangri-La. Then, where are we? Uh, this is Shangri-La La La. Uh, can we go somewhere quiet to discuss it? Sure. Just step into my portable office. Where is it? Uh, here in my briefcase. Okay. So now what do we do? We can't put on a show with all that racket going on. Uh, could you get the alien to fly on down and uh, make him quiet? Shh. We're still on the air, and this isn't that kind of show. We've got to make nice. Well, there is another auditorium. Really? Where? It's in my file cabinet, but i got to enter a special code to get in. What kind of code? Uh, the kind that appears on the front of a $50 bill. Have you got a $50 bill handy? No, but I bet you got one. You're such a big star and all. Hey, I do all right, but Uncle Sam gets most of it, and I can't seem to hang on to the rest. You mean, you know, Peck Penny? Say, that's a good idea. Why don't you ask him if he's got a $50 bill? You gotta be kidding. You know as well as I do that his real name is Peck Penny Pincher. I know, but that's why he'd still have it. Yeah, and that's because he keeps it. Oh, all right. Here you go. Okay, let's see. What are you doing? I'm reading a serial number off the $50 bill. It works like a combination. Say, why are you putting the 50 in your pocket? I'm going to need it so we can get back out again. I should have known. All right, let's go. Hey, who are the blonde guys? Oh, that is new act I'm about to audition. Are they brothers? Not entirely. They just look related because of the blonde hair. Is that their gimmick? No, they just like to hang around swimming pools and the chlorine does the rest. You want to listen in? Sure, why not? Okay, boys, why don't you do that new number you were telling me about? You know, the tribute to that low-key comedy duo? Yeah, go right ahead, hit it. Bob, 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 Bob and Ray. Bob, 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 Bob and Ray. Yeah. 
happy feeling, Bob and Ray, Bob, 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 Bob and Ray, oh, Bob and Ray. Well, what do you think? They're fine, but I'm afraid we won't have time this week. Well, that's showbiz. Anything can happen, but it never does. Now, let's bring on our first guest. He's not just a fortune teller, he's also a time traveler. Let's all welcome the one, the only, Nostradomino. <laughs> welcome to the show, Mr. Neustra... Neustra... What would you like me to call you? I don't like to use a name. Just talk to me. Well, that explains why my research people weren't able to give me much background on you. Would you mind telling us a little more about yourself? That is a subject that does not interest me. However, I will say that I prefer not to be called a fortune teller. All right. How would you describe what it is that you do? I am rather fond of the term soothsayer. What's the difference? A fortune teller attempts to predict the future. A soothsayer merely speaks the truth. So how do you account for your reputation as a fortune... I mean, as someone who can predict the future? I am actually a time traveler. I come from the year 50 BC. Wait a minute. How would you have known it was 50 BC? I am very good. I'm not sure the folks out there will buy that, but let's just suppose it's true. How does the time traveling fit in? Does it help you check the accuracy of your predictions? Uh, quite the opposite. I go into the future, then I just go back and report on what I've seen. I see. Have you had any problems with that? Yes, there was one time when a skeptic tried to embarrass me during a paid appearance. I predicted that I would never receive the compensation he had offered, so he wrote out a check and gave it to me then and there. Needless to say, I was booed off stage. That sounds like a setup. I mean, it made it really easy to instantly prove you wrong. Except that he didn't prove me wrong. He didn't? Come on, think about it. I predict that you'll figure it out. I don't know about that. But you do know about show business, don't you? Well, I... Wait a minute. Oh, I know. The check bounced. <laughs> well, there you are. So, are you now going to go back in time and tell everyone that you'll be on a successful radio show called Radio Free Filler? No, I don't think so. Why not? Nobody would believe it. Nostradomino, everyone. Wasn't he great? And now we're going to try a brand new feature. Jokes that time forgot. Let's have the intro. Howdy, folks. This is your old friend, the Jokesplainer, with some plain splaining of some jokes. Hey, wait a minute. I'm supposed to introduce the guests. Well, I don't mind. You can help me with the punchlines. <laughs> not yet. First, I have to tell everyone what this feature is all about. Folks, have you ever thought back to something you wished you had said? Tain't got nothing to do with it, Bob. <laughs> All right, then you go ahead and explain it. All righty. You see, there are certain kinds of jokes that come and go with the passing years. Sometimes a joke has to do with a particular event that seems funny at the time, but it wears out after a spell. Sometimes a joke is about some feller, but he ups and dies too soon, which kind of spoils the fun. Now, what we have here is a crop of jokes that might have worked some number of years ago, but now they need a little help for people to figure out what they're about and why they would have been funny. Well, I'm here to explain where these jokes come from and also when they were ripe but not rotten. Okay now, Bob, why don't you start off with the first punchline? Okay, here goes. I am an adjective from a chain letter. 
Now, that one goes back to around 1931, and it's a polka movie starring Paul Muni called I Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang. You see how that works now? Uh, not too well, I'm afraid. Tell you what, why don't you set up the story first, then I can swing in with a punchline. That'll make more sense. Okie dokie. It seems that long about 1970, there was this book that came out, and then they made a movie of it, and it was called Love Story. Well, like a lot of movies in them days, it had a kind of slogan or motto. We call it a tagline. Well, I don't. Anyhow, the motto of this year movie was, Love means never having to say you're sorry. Okay, Bob, let fly with the joke version. You ready for this? Lunch means never having to say you're starving. Of course, they would have set it up with something about how hungry college kids get sometimes. That kind of thing. Let's move on. Do you have another really old one? Well, there's another movie that had to do with rough stuff. Murder, I think. It came out around 1939. It was called They Made Me a Criminal. Only in this version, the guy's mother and daughter decide to make him a special candy treat for his birthday. And that picture was called They Made Me a Caramel. Uh, maybe a movie title is just ain't your strong suit. How about if we try something more recent? Well, there's the one from the 1960s based on a couple of books by a feller named Marshall McLuhan. You see, in the first book, which he called Understanding Media, Mr. McLuhan come up with the phrase, The medium is the message. Well, after that idea caught on, he puts out another book called The medium is the massage. But that ain't the joke. He was just being cute. Okay. Our version is supposed to be a new book about the Marshall McLuhan diet, and it's called The Medium is Too Tight. Yeah, you see, that one refers to the idea of someone getting too hefty to fit in regular britches. Uh, can we get something a little hipper? I still don't feel like we're connecting. Well, there's that variation of the 1969 song by the band Chicago. It's been updated to show the confusion for the people who no longer have a regular work schedule due to them safer at home orders. What was the original song? Does anybody really know what time it is? And the updated version? Does anybody really know what day it is? <laughs> That's kind of cute. Any other song titles? Well, there's a song that came out around 1971, kind of a murky rock thing, made a lot of money for a fellow named Carlos Santana. The original song was called Black Magic Woman. Okay, well, this was just a couple of years after the new kids' show Sesame Street came out, so our takeoff would have had some Muppet holding up a felt-tip pen and singing, Got a black magic marker. Still kind of a not-so-good reaction. Uh, maybe we can try something a little more recent? How about a nice new riddle? I'm game. Feed me. What's the 2020 U.S. Senate's favorite Quentin Tarantino movie? Kill Bill! Now, you know, that one's about how the House of Representatives gets together and draws up a proposal for a law then sends it over to the Senate, where the folks there don't pass it or do anything with it, and then that their law proposal, which they call a bill, it gets ignored until it's too late to make it into a law. As for the two Kill Bill movies, they come out in 2003 and 2004. Have you got anything more current than 2004? Well, there's this observation about the importance of text spacing. Seems that we're all in this together has been taken over by the people talking about the 2020 COVID problem, but it actually goes back to the presidential contest of 2016. Go on. Well, the original slogan had all the same letters, but they were space different to say, we're all in this to get her. <laughs> hey, now, you know, we usually stay away from personal politics on this show. Not only that, but it's not all that funny. Don't blame me. You asked for something current. 
Most of what goes on these days don't give you all that much to laugh about. I guess you're right. Sorry, folks. Here's a song to help make everyone feel better. Are you only talking to hear yourself talk The pretty things you say in such a gentle way should I even listen, or should I prefer Voices raised in anger, or crying out in pain Or the rage of the insane Am I only listening so I can drift away On your grown-up lullaby, to your castle in the sky so intelligent, but I'm not always wise when the meanings that I seek seem so difficult and deep that I work when I'm asleep. And I'm not really asking, I won't get any answers when I'm listening to you, cause that's not what you do. This is what comes through when 